has anointed me to preach good news to the poor and release to the captives. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, God of Mercy, God of Grace. God of mercy, God of grace, show the brightness of your face. Shine upon us, Savior, shine. Fill your church with light divine, and your saving health extend unto earth's remotest end. Let the people praise you, Lord, be by all that live adored. Let the nations shout and sing glory to their Saviour King. At your feet their tribute pay, and your holy will obey. Let the people praise you, Lord, as shall then its fruits afford. God to us all blessings give, we to God devote and live, all below and all above, one in joy and light and love. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O oh, come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. A reading from 2 Samuel chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron, and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them before the Lord and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah for seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah for 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the Millo inwards, and David became greater and greater, 
for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 48. I invite you to respond with the portions written in bold. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. In whose city is the holy hill of God. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion. The very center of the world and the city of the great sovereign. God is in its citadels. And is known to be its sure refuge. Behold, the rulers of the earth assembled. And marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in childbirth. Like ships of the sea. When the east wind shattered them. As we have heard, so have we seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God has established it forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God in the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad and the cities of Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion walk round about it. Count the number of its towers. Consider well its bulwarks. Examine its strongholds. That you may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. Who shall be our guide forevermore. Amen. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 2. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person... Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious measure, sung by flaming tongues above. Oh, the vast, the boundless treasure of my God's unchanging love. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Take my heart, oh, take and seal it. 
seal it for thy courts above. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed many with oil, who were sick and cured them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary? The people say this as they listen to his teachings, and there is something in them that is stirred, and they don't want it to be stirred. Who is this? What is he teaching? How has he done these things? Isn't he the son of Mary? This is meant to be an insult. Maybe more than that, a warning. We know who you are. In the first century, there was no saying someone was someone's, uh, a mother's son. You would say that they were a father's, who their father was, not who their mother was. This was meant as an insult to say, we don't know who your father is. It was meant to say, we know that there's something about you that your family might want to keep hidden. The trouble is, the reverse quickly becomes true as well. That if they know who Jesus is, then the truth is, he knows who they are as well. Maybe that is the underlying problem in the story that we have today. A fear of being known. A fear of the stories that surround us in our lives having more power over us than who we actually are. Jesus is developing a reputation of healing, of body, but as well of soul. We remember the woman from last week who was healed of her physical ailment, but then who told her story and heard Jesus say, go in peace, you are healed. Jesus is listening to people, and he is speaking truth to them, and as he does so, he is providing healing to them. But the truth in your hometown, spoken out loud in front of others who know the truth or who know a portion of the truth, who know the whispers really well, and those whispers keep a certain social order in place. For truth to be told in this place, That's a whole other problem. It is a whole other level of being known. It is not someone going out and leaving their surroundings and the people who hold them in place and reaching for Jesus. It is Jesus coming into the community, coming into the relationships, and offering healing to that place and to all of those people. 
There's a, a, a small phrase in this that Jesus was able to heal a few people of their ailments, but he was surprised by their unbelief, and he could do no great power in this place. I am making some, some guesses this morning, but my guess is that they did not want to hear the truth. The truth of who Jesus was compared to the story that they liked to tell about him. They did also not want to hear the truth of themselves and be challenged by that truth because it would pinch before they would get to the healing. They would be exposed to one another and they would have to deal with that new relational dynamic. They would have to live with each other in a new way. And so it's shut down right as it begins. Who is this one? Isn't he the son of Mary? That's the end of it. Jesus moves on. He goes to other towns and other places. He offers healing there for those who will take it for those who cry out and reach for healing. And then beyond that, he sends out his disciples. But he gives them the same teaching that he received in his own hometown. If someone does not want to receive you, don't stay there. Keep going. There are others, others who are longing for freedom, others who are longing for peace with God. And so go. Wipe the dust off your feet and go out. One of the sermons that I preach over and over again is that our prayers and our good works or our sins, they aren't a way of manipulating God. God is not our puppet. He's not a scorekeeper keeping track and helping us when we have done enough good or not helping us when we have done enough bad. We do not manipulate God with the perfect recitation of prayers to do our bidding on matters important to us. God is free and God is able to act as God so desires and God often goes ahead of us and beyond us and acts in ways that we could not ever imagine. And yet this is held in balance. It is held in the tension that we do live in relationship with God. And should we choose to, refre to refuse the healing that God offers to us, God will not force what has been offered. Jesus turns to his disciples and says, go out, stay with the people, offer them good news of peace and repentance, forgiveness. But if they aren't interested, that is okay, keep going. This is a hard word that Jesus could not act amongst his own people. That because that they had already decided who he was and what that meant about him, that they would not allow themselves to be a part of the good and healing work that God wished to do amongst them. Even when it walked in, even when it was delivered to them in their own space. Jesus did a bit of work in the end, but he kept moving on for those who were looking for God to be amongst them in a new way. We need to hear these words and we need to take our assumptions of Jesus and what we are very certain about God and how God will act. And we need to put those back and look at them next to the Jesus that we, we know, that has been shown to us through scripture. And when our assumptions about God and our assumptions about Jesus do not fit with what God has taught us about himself through Jesus. We need to take our assumptions and maybe throw them out. We need to return to Jesus and remember that God is acting in a new way. That God is acting in love, that God is journeying out to people, not to bring judgment, but to bring freedom, to bring peace and healing. Jesus went to his own people, he traveled to them to offer peace with God, to share with them a new way that would bring healing and a new day for their community. As Jesus offers that new way to us, may we be willing to hear it 
and brave enough to feel the pinch of the truth that Jesus may speak into our lives so that we might also experience the joy and the freedom and the healing that is offered to us through God. And may we remember that being known by God is never a threat. Being known by Jesus is never a problem. It is always invitation. It is always a welcome to a life of love, to a life of healing. Thanks be to the God who travels to find us and to make God's love known amongst us. As God travels to find us, may we not be afraid, but may we welcome him and invite him to stay. Amen. confess the faith of our baptism as we say I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray in faith to God our Father, to his Son Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray today for all who are experiencing the trauma and the difficulty of climate change. O oh God, you are our refuge and our strength, our help in times of trouble. Have mercy on the lands and communities devastated by fires, and especially this day for the people of the village of Lytton and the Lytton First Nations. Have mercy on those who have lost their homes and livelihoods. Protect those who have had to evacuate Bless and keep safe all firefighters. Strengthen those who seek to rebuild hope that all may face the future without fear. We pray for the church across Canada, remembering especially the territory of the people this day. We pray also for the Diocese of Brandon and for Bill Cliff, their bishop, and for Bishop Isaiah. We pray for the Diocese of Edmonton and for Stephen, Bishop-elect, and for his family. We pray for our social support ministries, 
for ICPM and Quinn and Michelle, for the Canterbury Court Foundation and for Joanne, for the Capital Region Interfaith Housing Initiative and for Mike, for our Interfaith Network Animator, E4C, and for Barb, for the Greater Edmonton Alliance and for Gary, for Our House Addiction Recovery Center, and Mark, and Aaron. We pray for the Diocese of Bouye, and for the Nyambayu Parish, and for Emmanuel, their priest. We pray for continued truth to be spoken and to be heard here on this land. And as partners in Treaty 6, today we remember and give thanks for the Cahiwin Cree Nation. For the Church of the Living God throughout the world, let us ask the riches of God's grace. Lord, Lord hear and, and have mercy. mercy. For all who proclaim the word of truth, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, Lord hear, hear and, and have mercy. mercy. For all who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, Lord hear and, and have mercy. For all who govern the nations, that they may strive for justice and peace, let us ask the strength of God. Lord, hear and have mercy. For scholars and research workers, that their studies may benefit humanity, let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who have sick, and for all we have been asked to pray, remembering today especially Ray, Sandy, Adeline, Dale, Paul, Dan, and Rebecca, for comfort, Peggy, Pam, Peter and Barbara, for Lois, Bob, David and Karen, for Anne, Dennis, Vivian, Ben, Virginia, Susie, Laura, and Raelle. For Anne, Gordon, and Ruby. For Janet, John, Mary, Brenda, Jerry, and Debbie, and Mick, and Lillian, and family. For all who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, let us ask the peace of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that what we do for the least of your children, we do also for him. Give us the will to serve others, as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, but lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land.
But thou art mighty, hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the that cloudy pillar lead me on my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.